growing grace today. Okay, tell yourself, I'm growing in grace today. You know, grace makes you achieve things that are unachievable by human strength. Grace empowers you to live where others of your equals can never live. Grace places you over and above your equals. It exempts you from the rule of life. It gives you dominance and the place of resistance. Grace is what makes you keep going when others already stopped. Oh, you find grace today. On Friday, Noah found favor. He found grace with God. You will find grace today. Hallelujah.
for us to be able to come and come not just gather together to ourselves, but gather together where God is present. I'm not talking about the president of the nation. I'm talking about the governor general of the entire universe. The God of gods. The Lord of lords. The creator of everything. The one who is God all by himself. He made all things and was never created. The almighty God. Our father. That when we come to the house, he is already there before us. This is awesome. This is awesome. And I know a good father, when the children come rejoicing to, to, to meet with him, he has a lot of goodies for them. Our father has a lot for us this morning. And I want you to scoop as much as you can. Because nobody will take your portion. Are you hearing me? We are in the season of the supernatural. The heavens upon us are open. And there is nothing that should stop you from pressing her into his presence. Hallelujah. You know, the word says in the book of Luke, I perceive 16, 16. It said, Until the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is being preached and every man present into it. Every man. It is impossible for the kingdom to be preached and people will say idle. Because the kingdom of God is not in words but in, in power. And we didn't come with eloquent speeches of man's wisdom but we came to demonstrate the spirit and the power of God before you. Before your very presence. That the power of God can be demonstrated. In a tangible way. That we can put the enemy to flight. That we can command a blessing upon God's people. That we can call the one that is destitute and that has no hope for life. We can call them blessed and they are blessed. Or oh, somebody is going home with a blessing. Bundles of blessings to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. So each time we gather like this, God adds grace to our grace. He adds favor to the one we already have. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says to us, grow also in the grace that is in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We shall grow in grace today. Amen. You grow in grace. I grow in grace. Then when we come out of this place, we have changed our levels. Our levels are changed permanently. Let me tell your neighbor you will grow in grace today. That grace is in the Lord Jesus Christ. As you grow in knowledge of the word, you will grow in grace. As you grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, your grace will multiply. You will grow in grace today. Okay, tell yourself, I'm growing in grace today. You know, grace makes you achieve things that are unachievable by human strength. Grace empowers you to live where others of your equals can never live. Grace places you over and above your equals. It exempts you from the rule of life. It gives you dominance and the place of resistance. Grace is what makes you keep going when others already stopped. Oh, you find grace today. On Friday, Noah found favor. He found grace with God. You will find grace today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I have an assignment this morning. Three, actually. So you're going to have to pardon me. I will rush. But catch me if you can. Let's see who is smart. Three assignments within a very limited time. 
So let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. I have to feed you with the word and we have to have the communion and then we have a very beautiful thing happening. At the end of today, praise God. So let's rush. I tattooed my thing today. I said, the life that prevails over death. The blessing that prevails over the curse. So the key word is prevail. The key word is what? Prevail. I shall prevail. Over my adversaries. You know, that's my proclamation. I don't know if you want to do what I am doing. If you want to do what I am doing, you better do it in faith. Because as you are declaring, so will God begin to do to you. I shall prevail. I shall prevail. Over all my resistance. Over all my resistance. I, shall prevail. I shall prevail. Over all my opponents. I shall prevail in my health. I shall prevail in the place of my work. I shall prevail in the realm of the spirit. I shall prevail in my finances. All so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 1 down to 3. There is a story that God said I should knock off. He said, the word of the Lord came unto me again. Meaning he came before. But he came again. In case you slept off and you didn't catch it the very first time. He's coming again this morning. Came saying, what minute ye? That ye use this proverb concerning the land of powerhouse ministries. Saying, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. The problem started with the fathers. But the effect came on the children and on the children's children. It's a story. It's an adage. It's a very wicked pattern. A bad repetition upon the image. He says the fathers, it could be great grandfather. It could be the grandfather. It could be the immediate father. They were the ones that messed up. They were the ones that missed the mark. They were the ones that broke the rule. They were the ones who were culprits. But we are the ones beginning to receive the lashes. Let's see what God has to say. He said, As I live, says the Lord God, you shall not have occasion anymore. Ay, ay, ay. I like this. I will not have occasion. Meaning there will be no reason whatsoever in your life and in my life to use that kind of a wicked adage again. So whatever my father did, my father paid already. I refuse to pay for the sins of my father. If my father messed up, the pain and the punishment ended with my father. I won't carry my father's load. I refuse to be punished for the sins of my father. All, all the mistakes of my mother, I refuse to bear them. I refuse to walk in their mistakes. I refuse to be molested on the account of my father's misdeeds. In the name of Jesus Christ. God says, as long as I live, says the Lord, this adage will no longer be used in your midst. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody here. This kind of punishment, this kind of negative pattern, 
this kind of evil, it will no longer be perpetrated in my life. Otherwise, <laughs> you will be using hammer to kill a fly. Isn't appropriate. At least my God said that is not proper. Now, Satan is a legal Satan. Very legalistic. He does not forgive. There is no mercy with Satan. He does not mind punishing the great grandfather, punishing the grandfather of the, for the same offense, and punishing the children, and punishing the children's 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 children. Why? Because he keeps covenant. That's why the scripture describes him as the accuser of brethren. He will accuse you of the, for the sins of your father. He will accuse you for the sins of your great grandfather. He kept up, he will perpetuate that wickedness and that punishment in that lineage. But God said, in our lives, this kind of habit will no longer occur. Somebody help me say, no more, no more. He said, as I live, says the Lord God, you shall not have occasion. Meaning the experiences you will be having from this day onwards, your manifestations from today onwards, will not be traceable to the sins of your forefathers. The manifestations will be better than they had. Because the punishment ended with them. Oh, I'm preaching God's word to you. The punishment ended with them. I refuse to be punished for the sins of my father, for the mistakes of my mother, in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember that word, the father's ate. We are going to eat something today. That all right, or that brings correction to that mess. What we are eating today corrects every mess in the past. Oh, believe me, believe me. Uh, all right, if you don't believe that yet, let's look at the book of John, chapter 6, verse 45 46. John, chapter 6, verse 4. Okay, let's read verse 48 for the sake of time. Jesus preaching said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. The bread of life. In the description, he said, your fathers ate in the wilderness and they died. But he went further to say, anybody who eats of this bread, will have life in themselves. Some people ate it and died. But as we eat today, we will live. Hallelujah. The book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 17. Psalms 118, verse 17 says, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the works of God. <laughs> Like mommy said, I concur and I join my faith with you, my woman of God, that every projection of the spirit of death over any one of you, I cancel in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not die prematurely. We had a testimony for the wheel of the car, for the driving, um, and then the, 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 what, um, the item, what we call it now, the road. The, the steering rod to, to, to break on the highway on the bridge and God took over and insists that there will be no death I am under my other hand it will be very wicked not to see that God is at work God was at work in that instance 
my God will come into operation concerning your life. Receive your deliverance from the power of death. You didn't hear me. I said, receive your deliverance from premature death. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I shall not die. Say it with me. I shall live to the glad works of God. Whether by mistake or by intention, you will not die prematurely. You know, some people get into situations, they say it's an accident. There are no accidents. There are no accidents. Whatever occurs, whatever happens, was made to happen, was programmed, was, was manipulated, was orchestrated, either by the enemy. Hallelujah. That adage that people die at a certain age in your family comes to an end. I'm just speaking to you in the name of Jesus. It comes to an end over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That added that a particular sickness takes people out of the family. I say I cancel it in your life. Even if the doctors already gave you the terminal date, I reverse it in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe God's word. I say I reverse it in your life in the name of Jesus. You will break record. The doctor's report, you will break it in the name of Jesus. So in Proverbs 11 verse 9, remember, whoever eats of the bread we have life now we want to feed on the spiritual bread and then we we'll go to the physical one hallelujah and the physical bread is the word on the table but the spiritual bread is the word of life you cannot be hearing this word and you'll be a normal man you can't you are beyond normalcy you live supernaturally and everywhere you show up, you prevail over and above. Remember that word I started with. You prevail. You prevail. It means things will come against you, but you will overtake them. You will prevail over them. Every circumstance of your life, you shall prevail over it in the name of Jesus. In Proverbs 11 verse 9, the word says, through, what, what did it say? Through knowledge shall those who are just be delivered. So the knowledge of God's word, you know you are growing in grace and in knowledge. Today you have moved a little further. And God is building you into a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am going higher. I am going higher. In Acts chapter 19 verse 20, please sit down. Acts 19 20. Acts 19 20. The word says, and so mightily grew the world. And it prevailed over. You see, it comes to a point when you grow. Somebody say grow. grow. Do it like this, grow. grow. Meaning there's expansion. Yeah. There is enlargement. Yeah. What you are hearing right now is bringing capacity to you, is bringing faith to you, is bringing grace to you, and then your size, your stature spiritually is getting enlarged. And when you are enlarged spiritually, there are no demons that can contain you. Every of your contenders, they become a victim. As you grow, you graduate from the class of becoming victims. First John chapter 5 verse 4. The Bible says, And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whoever is born of God does what? I am born of God, I cannot be overcome. <laughs> can, can you check yourself out? I am born of God. How many of you are born again? My father is God 
the Almighty Himself. I can't be overcome. I can't be overcome. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Nothing can conquer you. Because of the word of God that is coming into you, you will prevail. Every time you will prevail. I'm praying for you. You will prevail every time. No matter what comes your way, no matter what comes against you, you shall prevail. Whether visible or invisible, whether human or spirits, whatever comes against you, you shall prevail against them. Because if they come in the spirit, the word you are feeding on is spirit and it's life. And then Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 and 20 will come to play. That when the enemy come against you, like a flood, the spirit of God will raise a standard. If they come, when you are not even aware, the Holy Ghost is aware and it will take them on. You will flow and paralyze them in the name of Jesus Christ. I dare say to you that every ambushment against any one of you are destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. So the word grew and it prevailed. If I were you, I would underline that word prevail and grew. I'm growing in the word and I am prevailing in life. I am growing in the word of God. I am prevailing in life. I am growing in the word of God. I am prevailing in life. I'm growing in the knowledge of God. I am prevailing in life. That's your portion. That's your portion. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. He said the word grew and it prevailed. It, it, I can't be eating this word and I will not grow. It's not possible to be hearing what I'm hearing and people and demons will molest my life. I am I'm, I'm done with all that. I'm superior to the situation. Hallelujah. I tried to do a check on the word prevail. To prevail mean you become superior. Hallelujah. You prove to be more powerful than the circumstances. That's what it is to prevail. You are more powerful than the issues. Stronger than the challenges. You are in a better status than those who are in your opponent. Hallelujah. I am superior to these challenges. Say it with me, I am superior. I am superior. You are. Because of the word you are eaten. He said the word grew mightily. What does it mean to be mighty? To grow mightily. It means you grow vigorously. You are growing vigorously. Extensively. Exceedingly. You are growing. Somebody say I'm growing. I'm growing. I am growing. I'm growing. What does it mean to grow? To grow means to increase. It means to develop. It means to become larger and greater and to multiply. And that was God's command from the beginning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, 27. He said, dominate, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. That's the blessing. That's the blessing upon your life. And remember where we are coming from. That God's confinement upon your life is the blessing that prevails over the curse. It is the life that prevails over death. You cannot participate in this and then death is still chasing you. When we look at the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 tells us that inasmuch as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus himself had to participate. Oh, somebody say, I'm a partaker, I'm a partaker. You're going to be participating in the flesh and the blood of the master. You will participate. Somebody say, I will participate, I will participate. He said, inasmuch as the sons 
the children are partakers of the flesh and blood. He said the master, Jesus himself, had to participate in death. So that through that, he might be able to destroy him that had the power over death. And to destroy him and release all those that are all their lives under the fear, the power of the fear. You know, fear works with death. Every fear of death in your life, today we excuse them. We eject them. We fire them out. You shall not be afraid in the name of Jesus. Because the things that you fear eventually comes upon you. I told those that I have taught so far in um, driving, I said the very first key to learning to drive, self-confidence. Just understand that this thing is a toy. And what do you do with toy? You play with it. If you have that confidence, even when you make mistakes, the audacity to correct it is there. But when you panic, you already gave the enemy uh, a sign that I am a weakling. I am not in charge. Hallelujah. I have confidence in the Lord. Everything that is against me, I will prevail over them. Do you, how many of you have challenges? You have issues in your life. Say with me today, I will prevail over these issues. You will prevail. You have financial issues, you have health issues, you have uh, children issues, you have uh, whatever kind of issue, you will prevail. Convince yourself, I will prevail, I will prevail. By the power of God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the word the class in Revelation 5, 5, he said, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus prevailed. Oh. <laughs> he prevailed over death. He prevailed over sickness and disease. He prevailed over Satan. He rubbished him. The Bible says he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show. What is the grace? This grace of him. Oh, you will prevail because he prevailed. Because he prevailed, you will prevail in the name of Jesus. Or find somebody you can speak faith to us. Because Jesus prevailed, you will prevail also. You will prevail over death. You will prevail over sickness. Ah, yeah, man, you will prevail. You prevail. The spirit inside of you is a spirit of chance. Is the spirit of winners. First John chapter four verse four says, "We are overcomers." Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are what? Overcomers. It means there are things to overcome. You will overcome every of your challenges. By the power of God this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, somebody say louder. Amen. We saw in Genesis, I, I want to declare the blessings now. Because that blessing must do what? Swallow curses. All that has happened with my father, my great-grandfather, it was a curse to us, but now it's reversed. It's becoming a blessing. You didn't hear that? It's become a blessing. Whatever didn't work in the life of my great-grandmother, in the life of my grandmother, Whatever didn't work in the life of my mother, even currently, oh, it will work in my own life. <laughs> because my mother didn't know any better. Now I know more. Now I have grown in grace. Ah, and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
therefore what was a curse to my mother will turn around and become a blessing to me. Oh yes, that's your portion. You believe in say a loud amen. In Genesis 49, 26. Genesis 49, 26. And this is uh, Jacob pronouncing the blessing into the life of his children. This is so peculiar and this is so important, significant. You see, whatever is like a blockage to anyone's life, that thing is subject to an authority. And that authority starts with the authority of a father. There is no situation that a father cannot lift for his children. There is none. It pleases God the Father to place that onus, that authority upon men so that a man who is a father can take on the challenges of their children and command that the burdens be lifted. I stand in my place and my position today and I proclaim and declare Every burden, every situation, every curse, every judgment, every invocation, everything that has hindered your life from expressive, from being expressed in the order and in the way God wants it to be expressed. Today, today, by the anointed, I command that burden to be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, the blessings of thy father <laughs> About three o'clock today, one of my sons sent me a message. Please sit. One of my sons sent me a message. A pastor in his own right. And he said, there was a revelation that was a, a man of God gave to him. It was supposed to be a bad two things one day. And each of them confirmed the same thing. So he was so much in a confusion and worry, but he knew where to go. That's the story. Whenever you don't know what to do, you need to know where to go. Some people don't have anywhere to go. When the enemy come against you heavily, some people just have nobody to go to. Because when they had opportunity and the privilege to be just too late a child, they assumed no responsibility of a child to anybody. Nobody's my father. <laughs> That's a fool. A fool. Because life itself will teach you that there are things you cannot take on by your strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you are going to have to face that issue by your strength, it will drown you. But there are people given the ability to carry that weight and just throw it aside without even feeling any pinch. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he, he, said, he sent the word to me. He knew I should be able to know what to do. About three o'clock this morning. And you know, I didn't have to go ahead and pray. I just gave instruction. If you follow that instruction, the matter will resolve. Just an instruction. Praise the Lord. Because the devil that bedeviled him cannot bedevil me. We have risen beyond that. We have paid our price by his grace. Hallelujah. He said, the blessing of thy father have prevailed. I just want to stop there. Prevailed over what? All the curses of the enemy. If the father calls you blessed, you better believe and rejoice and move on. And on behalf of our father who is in heaven, I am here to declare the blessings upon every one of you today. I'm here to declare the blessing. In Judges chapter 6 verse 2. Judges chapter 6 verse 2. It said, Your hands will prosper and prevail against your enemy. 
or a storm, my hands prospers and prevails against my enemies. May the Lord prosper your hands. Why don't you show God that those are hands that you have? You're doing something with your hands, aren't you? You, 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 how many of you love to live perpetually in poverty? It's not a big deal. I don't need money, really. I just like the way I'm living. I have enough. I don't need any help from anywhere. I'm okay. Me and my darling, we need help. We acknowledge God the Father. <laughs> and we need his help. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us will jo join, join me and mother and say, Lord, we need help. Lord, we need help. So, open that hands as a man wanting to receive from the God who is able to help you. I'm not saying receiving from man. Men are limited. But God is without limit. Whatever you need that help for, whatever that help is needed for, oh God, I ask, in the name of Jesus, Amen. prosper these hands. Amen. Prosper these hands. Amen. Let these hands prevail. Amen. Oh, you didn't get it. I said, may God prosper these hands. Amen. These hands that are lifted, either in examination, either in test, either in your business, either in your health, either in your jobs, whatever it is, may the Lord prosper your hands. May the Lord prosper your hands. May the Lord cause you to prevail. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes you are living with an enemy and you are not aware. Sometimes you are married to a Satan's daughter and you are not aware. Sometimes your relatives are the problem behind your situation and you are not even aware of who. But may the Lord prosper your hands and cause your hands to prevail in the name of Jesus. Lastly, before we take the communion, 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 2. Please sit. 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 2. It says, Judah prevailed above his brethren. Meaning the brethren also prevailed, but Judah became exceptionally. He triumphed over his brothers because of Joseph. May the blessing of Joseph come upon your life. You see, Joseph is a leader. He was a leader. A, a, the, the, the set man of the family. Although he was the second to the last. But he took the place of the firstborn. You will you'll be accelerated to take the place of those who have gone ahead of you. Because of the advantage position in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless the communion today. It will give life to those who receive it. Let the mystery of life that displaces death, let it be unraveled through this element. As we eat, because you said to us in John 6, 48, that whoever eats of this bread had life because you are the bread of life. We release the power of God. We release the glory of God. We release the grace of God. And we remember that you defeated death. You defeated sickness. You healed all manner of sickness and diseases. And we receive this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name.